pop culture. There's only one man who can help us understand all of that and even more. He is the founder of Rock Nation. He is the co-owner of the streaming service called Tidal. He is a 21-time Grammy winner. He got a house made out of Grammys. <laughs> and he got nominated for eight more tomorrow night. Please welcome to the Van Jones Show, Sean Jay-Z Porter. This is nice, man. You know, this is nice. I, they hooked you up. You got a nice spot going. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we uh, they 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 did me upright. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when they heard you were coming. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, I never knew how many people loved me and cared about my career until you said you was coming. All of a sudden, I got cousins like, hey, you know, I just want to be there to support you, and um, I got a mix mixtape, you know, I want to. So anyway, so it means a lot to have to have you here. You know, thank you. Um, uh, this album, the 444 album, you've got all these awards and nominations. One of the things that blew my mind, though, is when you had the video on Family Feud and you show Blue Ivy uh, having grown up to either save the world or take over the world, and she's rewriting the Constitution, all that type of stuff. And it's just beautiful, uh, just so powerful to show women of color with that kind of, of, of standing. Mm -hmm. But Blue Ivy must be dope, man, for you to be like sitting that kind of a love letter to her. What is it about Blue Ivy that you love so much you want to do a song like this about her? Man, she's just special, man. She, she, she's uh, um, someone who's definitely been here before everyone says that. But I, I believe that because she has a, um, she's so in tune to her feelings and others, you know, how other people feel. Mm -hmm. um, I, we were seeing a fire from my house uh, this is before the bell, the the fires just the, recently in, in Los Angeles, and it was it was far off, and uh, she just seen smoke, and she just started crying, and she's I don't want anyone to be hurt. Wow! Like that's the that's type of empathy, empathy, and yeah. human being that she is at such a young age, and that that concept was dreamed up, dreamed up by myself and uh, Ava. Ava DuVernay. Yeah. Yeah. She and uh, I wish we could have taped the phone conversations because they were beautiful. You know, just just dreaming up this world where um, there will be no more firsts for black people. Like all the firsts had been accomplished. So wow. let's move that out of the conversation. That Check. conversation is done. Check. So what, where do we go from here? You know, which is a beautiful thing that... Uh, that we dreamt up and I'm glad that people respond to the I way mean, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Right? You know, It's just, you don't even realize what you're missing in the culture until somebody shows it to you. You know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of, you know, black, black people have a lot of history, but very little future. We, we, we got a whole month for black history, but we haven't even got like a black future weekend. Like, we never talk about the future, you know. So, you know, to be able to see that and also to see it so, so women-centered. In this mo uh, Me Too moment, in this mm -hmm. Time's Up moment, does that give you hope for your daughters? I mean, how do you make sense of, of this new rise of women's voices? Yeah, I think it's, um, again, I believe everything happens for a reason. You know, everything is a learning experience. You know, the good, bad, and the ugly. And, you know, this had to happen to purge itself. You know, for, for you know, men who've been in position for so long. And then, of course, if you're in that position of power to abuse your power, you get drunk off success. It's like human nature if you go unchecked. It takes a really special person to have that sort of power and not wield not it. Abusive. Yeah, yeah. In, in the wrong way. So, you know, it has to happen. This 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 movement and everything that's going on and this uh, what we're finding out, it's like everything else. It's like racism, like everything. It's, it existed the whole time, and we just it's almost like we normalized it. The norm the normalization of the things we have to do to survive. <laughs> Like, for women to, like, go to work knowing that this sort of abuse was happening every day, it happening every day. Because you can look and, you know, logically you say, why would you stay there? Right. Yeah, what's the alternative? Yeah. What's the alternative? You have to uh, survive in America. And, and in order to survive, you have to normalize it. So this has been going on. So for it to get uncovered and the world to correct itself. 
Um, this is this is what has to happen. Well, you know, um, you now have uh, two daughters to worry about. You, you have uh, uh, twins. I'm, uh, I'm here to warn you about something. I'm right? not worried about my children. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You have to yeah. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's I know it's a word, but I don't even want to put that out there in the world. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm hopeful for my daughters. Yeah. I, I, um, the, the amount of information um, that we'll give them, and the amount of love between those two things. You know, they, they'll be, they'll be, they'll okay. be fine. They'll be all right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's beautiful. Now, I love, you know, I love how you keep it positive. Yeah. Um, I, I will, I will say, uh, you have a set of twins. Yeah. I want you to know something. I'm a twin. Mm -hmm. I, I have a twin sister. Her name is Angela. Hello, Angela. Um, and just be prepared because twins are no joke. We can, yeah. like, telepathically scheme on the parents. Yeah, yeah. We'd be yeah. like, you know, yeah. I'm going to cry from 1 to 3 a.m. Yeah. And then you pick it up from 3 to are, are, yeah. are, are, they, are they driving you nuts? We drove yeah. our parents nuts. How, how, yeah. are they, how are they having twins as a super dad? It's actually, a, it, we're in a beautiful time now mm -hmm. um, because they're seven months and they can't move. <laughs> They can just cool. They just, they just cool, and you don't have to like wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 wait. You know they're not running anywhere yet. So we gonna we gonna enjoy these couple months until they start running, and, and then, then it's, it's gonna be then it's over. Yeah. 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 Now speaking of running, uh, Blue Ivy got to run around in the Obama White House a little bit. Uh, yeah. Do you think that these twins will be running around in the Trump White House? Now? <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> not, a, not a shot. Not a, <laughs> But why, but why not? I was thinking about this honestly. Like, well, we won't be invited, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, with, with Trump, could, yeah. he can say, "Listen, yeah. I'm the first hip hop president. Yeah. I get in beast with people. I like bling. I got yeah. a plane. I yeah. mean, he could make a play. What if he made a play? Yeah. Well, he doesn't have the struggle, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. Yeah. yeah. That's the key. Um, you know, I um, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about this because you know, as a parent, you know, trying to raise black kids. Um, with all the positivity we give them, you know, we have a president that comes and says every African country is a shithole country. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that land with you as a dad? Yeah, that's it's, it's like it's disappointing and it's hurtful. It really is hurtful more so like it, everyone feels anger. But after the anger, it's really hurtful because, like, you're like looking down on a whole population of people. And you're so misinformed because these places have beautiful people and have beautiful everything. Yeah. Um, and it's just like this is the leader of the free world speaking like this. But on the other side, this has been going on. Yeah. This is how people talk. This is how they talk behind closed doors. There was a moment where Donald Sterling had been exposed as this racist on a private phone conversation that he was having. And they took his team from him. And it's like, okay, that's one way to do it. But another way would have been let him have his team and then let's talk about it together and let's Unless maybe discussion. some penalties, but because once you do that, right. all the other closet races just run back in the hole. You have done, you have been fixed anything. What you've done was spray perfume on a trash can, mm -hmm. and what you do when you do that is you know the bugs come and you spray something and then they come and then you create a super bug, right? Because you don't take care of the problem. You don't take the trash out. You just keep spraying whatever over it to make it acceptable and then you know as those things grow then you create a super bug and then now we have Donald Trump the super bug but no but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good point I mean it sounds like you're almost kind of Donald happy Trump that is a human being too let's, let's just I just, I just want you I just, I just think yeah. I'm being funny I think yeah. I say that too but Somewhere along his his lineage, something happened to him. Something happened to him, something happened to him and he's in pain, and he's like expressing it in this sort of way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as, it, in the hood, you see that a lot. You know, people. Yeah. You know, sometimes people are acting out the worst after the worst things happen to them. That's right. Uh, just to, to give him a little bit of credit too, let me ask you this: um, He is somebody who's now saying, "Look, I'm growing. Uh, I'm dropping black unemployment. Uh, black people are doing well under my administration." Um, it, uh, do, does he have a point that maybe the Democrats yeah. have been giving us good lip service but no jobs? Maybe he's going to say terrible things but put money in our pocket. Does that make him a good leader? No, because it's not about money at the end of the day. Money is not doesn't equate to like happiness. It doesn't. It's, that's that's not missing the whole point. You treat people like human beings, and then um, 
you know, that's 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 the main point. You can't treat someone like it's, it goes back to the whole thing. You're gonna treat me really bad and pay me well. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's it's not gonna lead to happiness. It's gonna lead to like you know, again, the same thing. Everyone's gonna be sick. And um, your point about that, yeah, yeah, on the Demo Democrat side is, yeah, it's been a lot. It, that's what opened the door for this sort of presidency. Right. For many years, guys, you know, middle America and things, they've been voting Democrat because that's what they were. Their family did. That's so right. they just did it as a as a, you know, a, God a reflex. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, th their needs wasn't addressed. It was just more so, OK, let's just use this, get this vote because this vote, it became about votes and not people. That's my my problem with government is. I think they forget that it's real people behind it, these decisions that they're making. They're not, we're not 25,000 votes in this area. It's like people going through real thing in real time and, you know, and then real pain. And when you ignore those, um, that pain for so long, you know, people out of, they'll out act of out. Yeah, they'll act out. And it's like, man, I want to see something different. I don't know. And then that opens the door for what we're living through now. You know, the thing I want to see, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, um, the thing that is so beautiful about you and so beautiful about what you're doing is that um, for so long hip-hop was this sort of, you know, pose of boasting and accusing. I'm great, you suck. Mm -hmm. And also, that's what politics has now become. Yeah. My party's great, you suck. Yeah. And all accusation, no confession. With your album, you have come out with a confessional hip-hop. If people in D.C. were as honest as you, we would have no problems at all. So I just want to appreciate you for what Thank you're doing. You. Talk about it more. Um, we have so much more to talk about uh, with DJZ. Coming up, and we have both been fighting on the same side of a really, really tough issue that we believe in. But first, I told you I wanted you to hear from the voices of real people on this show in a minute. So I went out on my social media channels and I asked you to send me videos of how Trump is doing. Take a look at uh, what the American people have to say. I want to let everyone know that I'm an avid supporter of Donald Trump. I'm afraid that we're losing our soul as a nation. Donald Trump is doing a really good job. I finally understand how fragile, how fragile our democracy is. More than you, by the way, just in case you was wondering on the map. And um, also tonight you're receiving uh, the Industry Icon Award for your music and for your philanthropy. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. But I want to get into this album. Um, I feel like uh, the 444 album is like this uh, breakthrough into freedom uh, for you personally mm -hmm. and really for all of us. Um, nobody cared more about freedom uh, that I know uh, than Prince. And you give a shout out to Prince uh, on the album, which, which really touched me. A lot of people don't know that you were his business partner. You were the last person he wanted to, uh, to, to do business with. After he beat the music industry, he wanted to be with you. Tell us about the significance of that relationship between Prince Rogers Nelson and Sean Jay-Z Carter for you. Really deep for me. It, it really, really was because, um, you know, just to watch this Watch this guy and how brave he was. This man put slave on his face at a time where we all were like, man, Prince is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then to come to find out, oh, he was fighting for his masters the whole time. He was fighting for his freedom the whole time. And for him to come, he came to me. I didn't, I, I didn't even have the nerve to call him and say, like, he came to me and said, I know what you're doing. I'm going to give you all of my work. Like a person who fought for their work their whole entire life to come to your office and say, I know what you're doing here. It was a really deep thing for me. You, you just explained how you feel about him. I want to tell you how he felt about you, because, uh, you know, I work with him very closely, too. And he, brother, he saw you as being the one who had finally beaten the system that beat down black entertainers for, you know, a century. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for him, you know, he, he loved Egypt, and you talk about Egypt, and when, when Africans were builders and owners and stuff, and he saw you in that line of a black builder wow. and owner, and he wanted to make sure that, you know, you knew that he had your back. 
And, um, you know, for, for me to see a brother, see a brother, he didn't just, I mean, he, I mean he, he had love for everybody. He didn't have respect for everybody. He had respect for you, brother. And I just want you to know, he, 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 he made the world to him. Thank you. So um, let, me, let me just move on. Uh, this album is a gateway drug to freedom. I mean, it is unbelievable what you've been able to do. Um, it's about you know, you know, financial freedom. Everybody talks about that OJ song like it's about OJ. That right. song is an ode to financial freedom. I've mm. never seen a rapper rapping about investing in art, you know what I mean, collector yeah. art, and buying property and real estate. How important for the African-American freedom agenda is intergenerational wealth, being able to give your kids not just good advice, but goods. That's right. Um, How important? You know, that? when you have your own independence and you're bringing something to the table, you can ask for something. You can say, oh, it's, it's not right. And then you can ask for something. Until, you, until we come to the table as a collective with our own power base and our entertainment, that's our natural resource. Until we come to the table with our own, as well as other things. To, with our own power base, nothing will change. It will not change. You can you can talk. You can we can riot. We can <laughs> rally. Nothing will change until we are providing a service, mm -hmm. and we're not the entertainment. We're not. It's just not like yeah, I'll pay you, and then when you leave, I'll pay the next guy. But to be able to own it, we have to own. Yeah. We have to own Prince, what we produce. Prince said, "If uh, if you don't own the masters, then the master owns you." you so go. that's that's about freedom. Yeah. More freedom in your album. Um, Freedom for the LGBTQ community. Your song about your mother coming out the closet, smile. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and then the video is so beautiful. You know, showing right. African-American women in such a beautiful, respectful, you know, and subtle way. Um, uh, what did it mean to you to be able to write a song like that about your mother? It was, uh, it was beautiful because it was just really, I was at the end of the pretty third, three quarters of the way done with the album and my mom had came to me and she was like she just sits in my I know when she has something on her, her thing she <laughs> she gets like a movement like she just so she sits and she's like and I'm like what's that what's happening uh, she's like I think I'm in love and we had never spoke like that like you know we always knew that she was gay our whole life and um we just never addressed it and the fact that she trusts me, she felt so safe with me that she can say that, one. And two, the fact that she, you, I just felt the, the, the weight of the world lift up her show. I, I cried. I don't even believe in, like, crying for happy moments. I don't mean, <laughs> I'm a Marcy project. You cry for happy. <laughs> Who does that? I didn't think that was, like, a real thing. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm not, like, literally cried. I just was so happy for her that she didn't have to hide anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this song. And I couldn't wait, so I played it for her, and she said, absolutely not. And I was like, wait, no, no, this is, no, but this is beautiful. Like, this is freedom. Like, people tell your story, you get to tell your own story. And then she had to sit with it, because you got to imagine, she's been holding this in her whole so, life. So it, it took her a second, and then when she overcame that fear, she had wrote, she, she wrote that poem wrote at the, the end, and then she flew um, to where I was at. She so many. I talk too much, huh? No, no. I'm, 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 I'm talking too much. If I'm saying, shut up and let Jay do Jay. We'll see you next weekend. Uh, but no, I, uh, I, I, I just am thinking about so many black people have still that stigma. Yeah. And they'll say, well, I love the person, but I can't love that lifestyle. How does that sound to you thinking about your mother? I don't even understand that. It's, it's, it's another form of. Uh, you know, oppression, like it's no different than people looking at black people for how they carry they carry on with their life. It's what anyone does in their own bedroom, in their own, the, the freedom of America. We live in America. This is the whole point. Free. That's the whole, yeah. that's the whole ethos of the country. The whole thing was yeah. built on that, right? Correct? And, you know, um, it's, it's, again, it's a, it's, it's a negative um, way yeah, of looking yeah, at life. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other freedom I see in the album is just the freedom for couples who have gone through something. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. You know, it's almost a cliche, you know, the celebrity couple, you know, they get together, they break up, you know, I'm like, well, who else are they going to go out with? But for some reason, you took an unprecedented stand to mm -hmm. fight for this marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, to fight for it mm -hmm. and to put it all out there. What is it about this marriage that's so special that you would fight this hard to, to save it? Well, it's my soulmate. It's the person I love, you know. And you, and you 
You can be in love with someone. You can love someone and you're not. And if you haven't experienced love and you don't understand it and you don't have the tools to move forward, then you're going to have complications, period. And if you, you can either address it or you can pretend until it blows up at some point. And, you know, for us, we chose to for, fight for our love, for our family, to give our kids a different outcome. You see, see uh, you know, to break that, that cycle. Um, for black men and women, you know, just to see a different outcome, like you were saying. It's not this celebrity couple. We, we were never a celebrity couple. We were a couple who just happened to be celebrities. That's beautiful. Like, right? like real people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what advice would you have for men who have caused pain in marriages? I mean, what? I mean, it's, it, it's easy. I mean, somebody like you. The best apology is change behavior, right? Mm -hmm. But um, change behavior, one. And then also you have to... You know, you have to acknowledge. You have to acknowledge the pain. You have to let that person have their say. You have to. You have to. You have to get on the floor, get on the mattress, and you have to really work through it and really be honest. And and no matter how many times, it takes a while. It's hard. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to hear. Difficult to say. It's difficult to, you know, to listen to that sort of pain. And you just have to be strong enough. You have to be strong enough to go through that. Because on the other side, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, um, in, yeah. in, in our case. I, you know, you know it, it, that, that's a level of strength really on both sides. I mean, if the, if the yeah. shoot had been on the other foot, you know, yeah. if the transgressions had been on her side, mm -hmm. do you think you would be able to be as forgiving of her as she was of you? I hope. Uh, again, because I love her the same way. No matter, no matter what side, I love her the same way. I, I, I pray that I will because um, her strength. And her, you know, you know, man, she's the strongest woman I know. Like, you know her and my mother, they battle in the field of one. Beautiful, I, um, you know, I just want to say to you, uh, you, are, you are blazing a trail, you know, for a lot of us to follow, but, you know, financially, culturally. You know, the idea of confession could save so much pain and suffering in politics and every place else. I honor you. You know, one of the guys said, you know, just make sure to ask him before he leaves, you know, uh, is he in the Illuminati? And I said, no, I'm not going to ask that, but are you? <laughs> I'm in the new Illuminati. <laughs> Let's give it up for Sean and J.G. From one of our brightest stars to one of our darkest moments when we get back, August 2007 in Charlottesville, uh, uh, Virginia, I traveled there to see how the residents feel about these Confederate monuments and the Nazi-inspired murder that shocked the world. I'm going to take you there when we come back. Thank you, and thank you, Jay-Z. Welcome back to the Van Jones Show. I'm talking to my, jet, my guest, Sean Jay-Z Carter. Uh, I'm going to make him my... I'm making my co-host. Um, you know, you are just so good at so many things. But one of the things I think people don't know that you are and that you're good at is that you're actually a sports agent. Uh, you decided to not only change the game in music, but also you saw athletes being taken advantage of. And you now represent uh, uh, athletes uh, through Rock Nation. So I got a question for you. Uh, Colin, Colin Kaepernick, mm -hmm. you know, I mean... Uh, here's a guy, he is now, I think, a, an American hero, sticking up for civil rights, sticking up for police reform, sticking up for the First Amendment. Uh, he's a legend. He's going to go down with the Muhammad Ali's or whatever. But he lost his job. If you, have, if you were his sports agent, Jay-Z is the sports agent for Colin Kaepernick. And before this all happened, he came to you and said, I want to do this. Would you have said, do it, don't do it? What would you have counseled the brother? Oh, 100 percent do it. Wow. I mean, just look how many people play football. They're not all going to be him. Like, you just put his name next to Muhammad Ali. Would you rather be playing football, getting your head dinged in, or would you, <laughs> or would you rather be an iconic figure for the rest of your life? A job that could, I think people, again, we, we confuse the idea of having a job with fulfilling your purpose. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you started the church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 
Um, somebody else uh, who we both care a lot about is Meek Mill. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's a part of the Rock Nation family. Mm -hmm. uh, a terrible judge sent him back to prison for maybe two, maybe three years for a minor probation violation. Mm -hmm. But that would have been the time a lot of business people cut ties. Rather than cutting ties, you double down, yeah. triple down. Yeah. You're fighting for him right now. Why are you taking such a strong stand for Meek Mill? Well, Meek is a beacon, right? He's a vessel. The light go through. He bring attention to this issue because this is not. This is not the first time this happened. This is, un unfortunately, in America, this happens to black and brown people way too often. What happens? When you're on probation, you're on this paper, for you do a crime, you do whatever time you do, and then you're on paper for, he's been, uh, he's been on probation for 11 years. 11 years for a fairly minor offense. 11 years. So now you, you, it's almost like you're tethered to this thing, and they're just waiting for you to do something wrong. And every time, you know, something happened, the guy popped the wheelie. He was shooting the video, and he popped the wheelie in the street, which is a minor offense, right? It's like your kid goes to a skateboard park and skates where he was not supposed to, and someone gives him two years. Two years in prison. In prison. Yeah. Um, and, again, we're not – me comes from a tough neighborhood, so he's going through his trials and tribulations. We're not sitting here professing that he's some um, angel, but in this particular incident – um, you know, that, the whole system needs to be reworked the way, in, in the way that happens. What's amazing about you is you're not just doing it for him, you're not just rapping about it, you're actually out here really fighting for stuff. You wrote that piece in the New York Times about the bail industry and how the bail industry is a huge racket. I, so I took inspiration from your piece and I actually made my own video explainer to people because people don't even know what's going on. So uh, check out this video explainer that I did on the bail bond industry, which you've been writing about and fighting about as well. Your bonds are set at $5,000. Your bond is $3,500. I'm going to leave your bond at $5,000. The bail system works by taking money from a defendant in exchange for their release. But if a person can't afford bail, they just have to sit in jail. On an average day, 721,300 people are being held in our jails. But 66% of those people are being held pre-trial, meaning they haven't even been convicted of a crime. So while you're sitting in that cell, you or your family member can try to pay the bond, but for some people that can mean foregoing basic needs like child support or shelter or food. Remember, you're not just in jail for a night or two. You're there until your trial actually starts. That could be weeks or months or years. Like. Khalif Browder, who was 16 years old when he was accused of stealing a backpack. His bail was set, though, at $3,000, which he didn't have and couldn't afford. So he ended up spending three years at Rikers Island waiting for trial. There he was beaten, he was abused, he was held in solitary confinement. When the charges were later dropped, he was just released. But two years later, he was still so traumatized that he killed himself. Jail affects people of color way disproportionately. Black people are jailed at almost four times the rate of white people. Leaders on both sides of the aisle agree this is a really big problem. You actually uh, uh, executive produced a documentary about Khalif Browder, that young man who was held in prison, uh, held in jail for three years and hadn't been convicted of anything. Um, and, and so much you're doing. Why do you care personally so much about the issue of criminal justice reform? Because you're all over yeah. it. Um, I have I had a friend who got uh, killed in jail, um, and I come from these neighborhoods, so I know Khalif Browder. So when I seen this story in New York, I reached out to him before um, all of this happened. He, uh, you know, I met with him, came to the office. I just wanted to give him some words of encouragement, and he left. He was pursuing his GED. He was he was in uh, college, I think, in the Bronx. I'm almost sure, and you know, I've seen this story so many times, and I haven't seen it. In, a, in the case of Khalif, I thought it was had a happy ending. He, yeah. he came home, he went through the worst, he got through it all, he came home, he was pursuing, he was in college, he had a, okay. And then two weeks later, it was like he had committed suicide. You know, mental health, mm -hmm. trauma, PTSD is so rampant in our community. But, you know, as scared as black folks are of the cops, we even more scared of therapists. Like, we're not trying to go to therapy. Yeah, it's a stigma. It's a stigma. It's a yeah, stigma, and people yeah. are dying. You went to therapy, you yeah. talk about it. Yeah. How did you get over the stigma of going to therapy and then talking about it? Because you might help some, you might save a life just talking about that. Well, as you grow, you realize the, the, 
the ridiculousness of the stigma attached to it. It's like, what? You just talk to someone about your problems, you know? And I think actually it should be in our schools. You know, I think children, children have the most going on. Their mind are not fully developed and, you know, teenagers and you're drinking and you're doing damage to your brain. And, you know, all these things are happening to you and you don't know how social uh, anxiety and all these things are happening to you. And you don't have the language. That's right. You don't have the language to, to navigate it. How, how can you navigate it? How can you know when a guy is bullying you? All you have to do is say, man, you okay? You could change the whole thing. You know, so so, so those, as opposed those kind, of, those kind of tools and skills yeah. can get out, get out of therapy, which we don't have yeah. enough of in our community. Yeah. But we, we we are going to come back more with Jay Z. We're going to be talking about the Grammys, diving into the new album. But first, here's more of what you had to say about the state of our union. He's incompetent, ridiculous, foolish, embarrassing. I'm excited to support a man who stopped the Islamic terror of ISIS. He has inspired people to become more engaged. I truly love the respect he's brought back for the police and for our flag and for our veterans.